So now, have you, how long have you been Muslim now? I've been Muslim now approximately 27 years. All right. And in terms of Islam here in America and the growth of Islam in America, what have you seen transpire in that time since you first took Shahada? Well, I've seen Islam change from, in my time, in my lifetime, I've seen Islam change from a limited type of religion that was mainly associated with black people uh -huh. uh, to the universal Islam. Mm -hmm. that Allah SWT revealed it to be. Mm -hmm. I've seen Islam transform from a people who had very limited information about Islam, mm -hmm. so much so that most of us were just uh, perpetuating ignorance. Mm -hmm. uh, limited information to now there are books of tafsir from all those scholars, you know, Ibn Kathir, al qurtubi uh, all on and on. And it's all accessible even in our language. Mm -hmm. I've seen Islam go from a closet religion Mm -hmm. to a worldwide phenomena, which mm -hmm. now no one in the world can hardly say that they haven't heard anything about Allah, the Quran, Muhammad, peace be, peace be upon him. Uh, I've just seen Allah SWT raising the knowledge level of people about Islam worldwide, mm -hmm. accepting it or denying it, but still the knowledge is being presented to the world. Ma'am Ismail, I know you're very involved in the dawah, but what is your specialization? I mean, what field of the dawah have you devoted more time to? Well, the, alhamdulillah, the main area for myself as far as dawah has been in the uh, institutions, mm -hmm. prison dawah. Okay, but we're going to get into what you do in the prison dawah. Mm -hmm. But just give me an, uh, an, uh, a feeling of what the environment, first of all, is like in the prisons, you know, and that the, the people are there become, uh, you know, accepting Islam, being Muslim. But what is that environment like in the prisons here? Well, it, and really, that, that, that's a, a, a question that's relative to the geographic locations mm -hmm. because you have different prisons on different, with different programs, different wardens represent different mentalities in prisons. Overall, overall the uh, prison situation uh, in the areas that I deal in, basically Georgia and Florida, mm -hmm. uh, overall the prison situations are, they're not really... Uh, like the old dungeons and things like that. You know, prisoners uh, these days here in America, you know, they have many rights. Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, mashallah, you know, they are protected, you know, by and large by law. Mm -hmm. it, takes, it may take some time to get some things accomplished, mm -hmm. but still there is access to a type of justice within the prison system. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big concerns for myself uh, as far as seeing the numbers, the disproportionate numbers of uh, black people in the prison system. Mm -hmm. And of course it's representative of the social system itself that has not been having the uh, same, same standards for everyone as far as uh, rights. Mm -hmm. So you see a large portion of black people in prisons uh, and as a result of that you see that directly linked to the demise of the black family on the street. Mm -hmm. And directly linked to that is the fact that proportionately more black people were accept accepting Islam over the last 20 years mm -hmm. than the general populace of America. Right, and again, so, but what is, the, what is the particular appeal of Islam to black people? And, and this is what I was trying to, because I was making that link between the prison system, the portion of people who are accepting Islam in the, in the prison systems, and how that affects the society at large. Mm -hmm. The outcry that we hear amongst the people, the outcry that we hear from the people is that, you know, black families destroyed, and these people are not doing anything, and they are no good, and they need to be in prison. You know, mm. but once we go inside the prisons and start to present programs to the individuals inside, mm -hmm. we see that Allah grows and exalted. When a, in the Quran, Allah says, "For whomsoever Allah intends good, He gives them fiqhadin, gives them a good understanding of Islam." Mm -hmm. And actually, Allah will bring them into Islam and make them to excel. Mm -hmm. You see, so many of the people inside the uh, prisons who who become Muslim are men who have inclination towards studying, mm -hmm. men who have inclination toward establishing family ties, men who have inclinations toward making the unjust just. Mm -hmm. So the uh, impact that Islam has on the individuals is that it raises up, even in the prison population, it raises up a better prisoner. Mm -hmm. Because you find a person who looks at the rules and say, okay, this is right, this is just, and I can go along with that. But let me ask you, just the prison system is supposed to be about rehabilitation. So how, how big a part of it is Islam and rehabil rehabilitating people than just being in prison without? Once upon a time, prisons were about rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it's about incarceration now. Mm -hmm. You have guys that are maybe two in some institutions, three and four deep in a, in in in, a, in dorms, you know, in cells, you know, and they just sit there. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't accomplish anything. The only thing they do is time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, as far as programs, GED programs and different things like that, many of those things aren't accessible, uh, aren't, aren't accessible to people. Mm -hmm. But the ones who really want to excel, they will push hard and find those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Generally, people won't participate in the existing prison programs mm -hmm. because really, realistically, I mean, what do they offer them? Mm -hmm. Not a lot mm -hmm. because the problem is not so much with inability to att attain academically, but there's a spiritual sickness. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a, a void in the person's behavior that makes them continue to act in this negative way toward, toward society. Mm -hmm. Once the person becomes Muslim and the, uh, the requirements in Islam, ikra. Mm -hmm. You know, brothers are, it's just reinforced amongst the brothers. Ikra, read, recite, go learn, acquire information about yourself, acquire information about where you are, see how you can improve those things. So the Islam, the kind of impact that the, that the Islam has on the prisoners, it makes them a better prisoner. Once released from those prisons, if they stick to their Islam, mm. they become better members of the society at large. But let me ask you, do a majority of the Muslims, or people who become Muslim in the prisons, do they stick to Islam when they get out? Like most uh, religions uh, that are taught in the uh, institutions, mm -hmm. a, greater, a greater majority of the people don't adhere to the uh, the teachings of Islam or Christianity or Buddhism or whatsoever they acquire in prison. Remember, it's mm -hmm. a whole different circumstance. Mm -hmm. In prison, you're learning to do time, mm -hmm. and you fill in the blanks with what, what, what fill in the blanks about what those things that are accessible. Religion is something that's easily accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. and so now when you have to submit yourself to authority, it's easier to do it under the guise of religion. Mm -hmm. Once out and that freedom, if you would, you know, is placed before people and the choices are greater, mm -hmm. of course, you know, the weaknesses that they have, most of them are going to go back toward their old behavior. Mm -hmm. So in Islam, people accept Islam uh, 90% out of 100%, 90% maybe, mm -hmm. go back to what they were involved in before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if they do return to prison again, they are, they are the same kind of Muslims it's they were before they got out? Same kind of Muslims they were before. And, and again, this is, this is relative to the individual because yes. there are some people that, that they may not get it the first time mm -hmm. or the second time or the third time. Some never get it, you know. Mm -hmm. But they become the, at first when they go out, when they, when they become Muslim and then come back as Muslims, within the ranks of the brothers themselves, they lose a type of prestige mm -hmm. because their credibility is shot. Right. They, they had the opportunity and they taught and they teach inside the institutions. Once out and they return, people say, man, you ain't, you're not for real. Uh -huh. You know, you playing with the Islam. And this is, brothers are serious inside. Uh -huh. You know, you playing with the Islam. And so his word that was, once was so valuable before, now he's just another person, you know, mm -hmm. you know, let's like say flapping his jibs, you know, right. running his mouth. Right, right. And you, do you find, like in the prison environment, I know it's, of course, whatever nice the facilities are, there's still some danger involved in being in prison. So do you find that among the Muslims that they're able to, to, to foster some security among the Muslims in, in the prisons? Prison is a system of survival from the, from the guards forming together in their protective circles to each indiv individual group that forms together in their protective, servants, uh, mm -hmm. to protective circles. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be a fool <coughs> to say that the Muslims in prison don't have to establish those same circles. Mm -hmm. And because of that, many people will come into the ranks of the Muslims mm -hmm. for that additional protection. Mm -hmm. So they have to, I mean, that's part of prison, you know, learning to get with the people that are going to be with you and down for you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Your sincerity with God, really, that's not their business. How sincere are you to the man standing beside you? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the measure generally. Right. And a lot right. of those best. And like you said before, some of the people when they get out, they go back to their old friends and their old ways.